Hello everyone, I'm back and today I'm going to do an updated video to the video I created about a year or so ago entitled how I keep my pool crystal clear blue all summer long or something like that. I'm still using the same chemicals that I told you guys about in that first video which were this pool essentials liquid chlorine, muriatic acid, regular arm and hammer baking soda, two three inch chlorine tablets that I put in the pool in a floater every week. And I also use this HTH flocculent. I use this if I have a cloudy pool and I need to clear it up. I have a video on this on my channel as well entitled How to Fix a Cloudy Pool. Now there's some information that I said in my first video that's not entirely correct. However, that information does work for me and I still use that information, but it may not work for all of you guys. So today I'm gonna to give you guys updated information on how to use these chemicals the best way for your pool. The first thing I said in my previous video was that I use baking soda to raise my pH, which I actually do and it does work for my pool. However, baking soda is really used to bring up the total alkalinity and borax is used to bring up the pH separately from the alkalinity. So in my first video, I had that information backwards. Even though, like I said, it does work for my pool, it may not work for your pool. So let's talk about alkalinity and pH for a second. Alkalinity and pH are very closely related. Your alkalinity is actually what controls your pH and keeps it in line. So you really want to get your alkalinity in line first and then concentrate on your pH. Fortunately for me, with my pool, my alkalinity and pH are usually together. They increase and decrease together around the same rate. So if my pH is low, usually nine times out of 10, my alkalinity is low as well and vice versa. And what I've been doing is using baking soda to bring up my pH, which has been bringing up the alkalinity at the same time. And that works for my pool. Now, when you test your levels, if you're noticing that there's a vast difference between your alkalinity and pH, then that's when I recommend to you to use the baking soda to bring your alkalinity in line, to bring it up and use borax to bring your pH up or bring it in line. I still use muriatic acid to bring down the pH and alkalinity when needed. And I still use the liquid chlorine when I test my levels and the chlorine is a little bit low. Now, I have received many messages from you guys not understanding how to correctly use a pool calculator. And after revisiting it, I understand why now. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use the pool calculator with the new information that I just gave you. And you should understand it precisely and be able to use it to help balance your pool. But before I do that, I want to jump in my crystal clear pool now and have a little bit of fun. <laughs> Let's go. All right, you guys. So now I'm going to show you how the pool calculator works. It's really easy. So let me pull it up right now. So here is the pool calculator. Now the way it works is very simple. You put the amount of gallons that your pool has right here in this box. And then remember that we're only going to be testing for chlorine, pH balance, and TA, which is total alkalinity. So what we do is we put our test results in the first box. And then the second box is going to be our desired level. We hit the calculate button and it's going to tell us exactly how much of what chemical to add to get the desired results. So first, let's start off by putting in the amount of gallons that we have in our pool. And you can find that out easily by just going to Google or Bing. And then just type in how many gallons of water. Like for example, I put how many gallons of water are in my 18 foot round above ground pool. It says 7,646 gallons. All right, so now let's go back to the pool calculator. Here we are. So as you see for me, I just rounded mine off to 8,000 gallons. That's good. And remember, pool maintenance is not a specific exact science. You want to get in the ballpark or in the neighborhood, okay? So don't drive yourself crazy trying to make everything exactly perfect. Or you, you will. You'll drive yourself crazy, okay? So remember, the first thing we're going to do is take our test strips and we're going to test the water. Now, when you test the water, you're going to be checking for the pH balance and also the alkalinity. Now, there's only going to be four scenarios that you're going to use a pool calculator for. 
Number one is if your pH is low. Number two is if your pH is high. Number three is if your alkalinity is low. And number four is if your alkalinity is high. And then also if your chlorine is low. Because if it's high, you don't need to do anything except let nature take its course and it will reduce on its own in time. So let's say you tested your water and it says that your pH is low. Right here, you see that it says your pH should be between 7.2 and 7.8. Let's pretend that it's 6.2, which is low. You see that right there, 6.2 is low. So let's go back to the pool calculator. I've got my gallons here. I'm going to put 6.2. Right now, you see it says 7.5 and 7.5. That's a perfect world. But we're going to put it 6.2. And we want it to be 7.5. So we're going to hit calculate. And it's telling us that we would need to add right here 276 ounces of borax to bring the pH from 6.2 to 7.5. It's that simple. You can also use soda ash or washing soda. And it tells you that you can put 139 ounces of soda ash in. But remember, I told you that if you want to bring up the pH, you use borax and you're going to use 276 ounces. Okay, let's reset this back to 7.5. So now we're going to pretend like your pH is high. Let's say that it's 8.4. So we're going to change that to 8.4. And we want to bring it down to 7.5. We're going to hit calculate. And then it tells us in order to bring it down from 8.4 to 7.5, we would need to add 17 ounces of muriatic acid. So you just add your 17 ounces of muriatic acid and you'll bring it down. You should be good to go. Let's reset this again. Okay, in the next scenario, your alkalinity is going to be low. So, if we look on the bottle here, it says that your total alkalinity should be in the range between 80 and 100. You see that? But we're going to say that it's low. We're going to say that it's 40. So let's go back to the pool calculator. Down here for total alkalinity, you see it says 100. That's where it's supposed to be. We're going to change that to 40. We're going to press calculate. And it says to raise the alkalinity from 40 to 100, you're going to add 112 ounces of baking soda. Add 112 ounces of baking soda and it'll bring it up to 100. Okay, and then the last example is we're going to pretend like your alkalinity is high. And this will be the most difficult example, but it's really not difficult. <laughs> you just have to remember a few basic principles and you'll be fine. So let's pretend that total alkalinity is at 160 and you need to bring it down to 100. Now normally if your alkalinity is high, your pH is gonna be high as well. So we'll put the total alkalinity at 160 and we'll pretend that the pH was at 8.2. So now I'm gonna hit calculate. Notice that it doesn't tell you how much muriatic acid to add. And the reason is because muriatic acid, it lowers alkalinity and pH at the same time. So, in order to bring down your total alkalinity, you have to do it by bringing down the pH first. Notice that it says, to lower your TA, you reduce the pH to 7.0 or 7.2 with acid or muriatic acid. And then it says to aerate to increase the pH. We're not going to do that. Aerate means to add air. Just ignore that. What we're going to do is bring down the pH to 7.0 or 7.2 like it says. So if the pH is 8.2 and we need to get it to 7.0, just put that in, hit calculate. And then it tells us that we would need to add 51 ounces of muriatic acid. Once we do that and we bring the pH down to 7.0, that's also going to bring your total alkalinity down as well. So at this point, your total alkalinity should be in good, perfect range. And then all you need to do is raise your pH from 7.0 to 7.5. So you put this back to 7.0. And then put this at 7.5. And then we're going to put our TA back to normal. And then press calculate. 
So now at this point, all we would need to do is add 56 ounces of borax. And that will bring our pH back from 7.0 to 7.5. And that should not affect the alkalinity. So your alkalinity and pH should be in perfect level after completing that process. And then the very last scenario is your chlorine. So if you look on the bottle, you see that it has results for total chlorine and free chlorine. Now you see on the pool calculator, it only gives you results for the free chlorine. And that's good enough for me. Just use that one and you'll be fine. So for free chlorine, it's saying that your number should be between one and five, which is basically around four. If you notice on the pool calculator, it says that your goal is four. And that's about right. That corresponds perfectly with the bottle. So let's say that your chlorine is low. Let's say it's at zero, which is very common. So if it's at zero and we need to get it up to four, we just hit calculate. And then it's telling us that we need to add 67 ounces of bleach. And remember, I don't use bleach. I use chlorine and you can too. So just use about 67 ounces of chlorine or actually one gallon even though one gallon is more, but still, it's not going to hurt your pool. It's going to be good for your pool. To bring it from zero to four, add one gallon and you should be fine. Remember, if your chlorine is high, don't do anything. I don't. I just swim in my pool and just let the sun and mother nature take its course and the chlorine will eventually lower on its own. So that's about it, guys. Just remember that the relationship between alkalinity and pH is very close. Your alkalinity controls your pH. So it's very important to keep that alkalinity in line. And the best way to do that is with baking soda. That's why baking soda is my primary ingredient for maintaining my pool. The baking soda keeps the alkalinity in line, which in turn keeps the pH in line. If your alkalinity gets out of line, then your pH is gonna be all over the place. In order to get your pH in line, you get your alkalinity in line and then it'll control that pH. And once you get that alkalinity in line, you can use that baking soda. And what that will normally do is cause your alkalinity and pH to rise and decrease at the same level. That's been working great for my pool. So remember, alkalinity controls the pH. Get the alkalinity in line, and then your pH should be easy to control as well. All right, you guys, so that's going to do it. I hope you understood my explanation of how to use the pool calculator. Thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, happy swimming.